Hi, how are you? My name is Megan and today is Monday, which means it is time for Mad History Monday, where I sit down and I talk about something that happened in history that I find really interesting. If you like history like me, then I highly suggest you subscribe because I do post new videos like this every other Monday. Today, we're going to talk about alarm clocks, but it won't be boring, I promise. I don't think that we think about it very often, but the invention of alarm clocks was huge. Some might argue that they are one of the greatest inventions and others might say that they are one of the worst. I'm sure that some people back in the day also woke up crabby, but I know that every single time an alarm goes off, I just immediately develop a sense of rage, <laughs> which is not the best way to wake up, and I'm sure most people would agree with me. I now have an alarm that is the sound of chirping birds, and at first it was a lot better, but now I find myself just like irritable from the sound of bird chirping so I had to change it again because I didn't want that to be ruined too. <laughs> so whenever I tour old houses or mansions or estates like Mount Vernon, my favorite part about it are the bedrooms. I just think they are so fascinating from the color of the bedspreads to the large poles on the bed frame to the wacky wallpaper that people used to like, and the things that they decorate their bedroom with, and the really interesting old furniture and the dressing places. I can't tell you why, but I've always just been obsessed with old bedrooms. And I, I know that there are way more interesting parts of like historic houses, but bedrooms have just like drawn me in. It's weird, I know. But every single time I go and tour, a historic house and I'm in the bedroom I think how did people used to wake up on time I have no idea why I always asked this question to myself and also why I never thought to look it up research into it maybe ask somebody that was doing the tour how the people that lived in the house woke up in the morning I don't know so the last time I was at Mount Vernon I was determined to ask this question and get the information that I wanted to know. So I finally asked the person that worked there my most sought after question. How did George and Martha Washington wake up in the morning? How did they wake up on time to do the things that they needed to do for the day? In their case, you know, Martha ran the household and they had many enslaved people and Washington was in charge of farms that weren't immediately on the estate. So they had stuff to do. Anyway, so I asked the tour guide this question and at first he looked at me kind of confused as to like wondering why I was asking this question because normally people ask like, 
how tall was Washington or how many rooms did the house have? Like, I think he thought that this question was really weird. This is pretty much how the conversation went. And in closing, George Washington was indeed a pescatarian. Does anybody have any questions? Oh yeah, go ahead. Hi, so how did they like wake up in the morning? Um, you know, like what was George and Martha's alarm clock? Oh, I guess uh, other people woke them up. That's so interesting, tell me more. George and Martha Washington would have another person come into their room in the morning and wake them up. But during this time period, a lot of people still relied on the sunlight and their internal biological clocks to wake them up. Does anybody else have any questions? Anybody else? Yes. <laughs> yeah, me again. Um, so how did the people that woke them up wake up? Uh, I'm not completely sure on this subject, but I would assume there were other people that woke up the people that then woke up George and Martha Washington, because that's what they were assigned to do. So rich people had other people as their alarm clocks. But how did you wake up on time if you were poor? Did you even have to wake up on time? How did the enslaved people wake up? What about roosters? Does anybody else have any questions? <laughs> Me again. And ever since then, I have been even more fascinated with the subject, and I just had to really dig deep and do some research. And I went down many rabbit holes, but this is what I found. Before alarm clocks, and I'm talking way, way, way back, like the first humans, before, before humans even kept time, there was a timeless sense of nature. Okay, they just woke up when they woke up, and they ate when they wanted to eat, and they went to bed when they were tired. Nothing was kept in a time restraint. Then over many, many years, people started to keep track of time. They used the lunar phases and the sun and sundials. Calendars were created and people embraced a linear conception of time and then others saw time as a continuous cycle. And then mechanical clocks came along. And then many countries adopted the Gregorian calendar over the Julian calendar. Some people even used plant cycles to recognize time. And as the world became more fast moving and industrialized, standard time and time zones were adopted. And then Einstein came out with the theory of relativity. And then atomic clocks were invented. And our internal biological clocks were researched more in depth. And this all brings me to the point that I am trying to make. While society has developed, we have become obsessed with time. I'm not going to dive any deeper into the history of time itself because it hurts my brain. But I will leave a link in the description box to a really interesting article that I found online that dives deeper into the history of time itself. So you can go read that if you would like to know more about that topic. But for the purpose of this video, I want to focus on the history of alarm clocks in a sense. Basically, how the heck did people wake up on time before we had devices to wake us up on time? It doesn't sound super interesting when I say it like that, but trust me, it is. <laughs> the way society has developed, at least within European and Western civilization, pertaining to time, even from just the 1700s to now, is just mind-boggling. Before my research, I was under the impression that most people before the Industrial Revolution didn't have a need to be up at a certain time, mainly before the sun. I thought that most people just woke up when the sun poured onto their eyelids and they awoke blissfully and without discomfort. I was wrong. Although many civilizations throughout history did just rely on the sun to wake up and live their days. But oftentimes, many cultures had their own ways of waking up at specific times in the morning. Whether it be to ring the church bells, or go on a hunt, or fight in a battle, or milk the cows, or wake up your mistress, and so on and so forth. There have been ways 
for people to wake up before the sun for many, many years. Some of them might surprise you. Some early men used the art of bladder control. People would drink a ton of water before going to bed to make sure that they would wake up early when they had to use the bathroom. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I want to watch the sunrise tomorrow. Oh, cool. Can I join you? Sure. Oh, sweet. Thanks. The custom of over drinking was used by Native Americans up until the 20th century about. But there were other cultures that also did this. If I did that, I would probably wet the bed. A water clock is an ancient device that measures time by the gradual flow of water. The most well-known being the clepsydra. I don't think I'm saying that right. Clepsydra. It was not a constant clock, however. It was more like a timer. One form consisted of a large vessel, normally made from pottery. And it kind of looked like a large bowl with a spout at the bottom. Think similar to like a water dispenser. The spout would have a cork type thing, and when you wanted to start the timer, you would pull the cork out and then the water would begin to flow. On the inside of the vessel, there were markings that would show you how much time had passed relating to the level of the water. I think it's a similar concept to like an hourglass with the sand, you know? It was eventually improved by Tisibius of Alexandria, who created the world's first mechanical clock. There are many different forms of water clocks, and there is evidence that they were used all over the globe by ancient peoples. To be an alarm clock, a floating bob would simply be added to a clepsydra, and it struck an alarm, such as a gong, bell, trumpet, once the water reached the desired level. There were other versions of this as well. The first alarm clock was invented by Plato when he became annoyed that both him and his students often showed up late due to oversleeping. Other early alarm clocks, especially in religious civilizations, were bells. The ringing of bells was originally used to call people to worship in the morning and throughout the day. Bells became extremely popular in England. There was also a belief that the morning hours were the most spiritual, where you could be closest to God if you woke up at a scheduled time to pray. So many people were motivated to get up earlier. And a very basic one was just the noises of nature. This one is pretty self-explanatory, but it's still really interesting. In earlier times, especially before the Industrial Revolution, much of society was agricultural-based. People also didn't soundproof their houses, so the sounds of roosters crowing and cows mooing and birds chirping and so on could have all functioned as early alarm clocks. It meant get up, get the day started, you have work to do. Lantern clocks were first invented in England around the year 1600. They were driven by internal weights that would strike a bell, and this functioned as an alarm. Clock towers could function as an alarm for people that lived in close enough proximity and depending on the striking hours of the clock. In the 1800s, English people would hire knocker-uppers those that could afford them. These people would tap on their clients' windows with sticks until they woke up. Craig, you gotta wake up! Some would also shoot peas through a straw to wake up their clients. Knocker-uppers were prominent during the Industrial Revolution because now people had to get up at a certain time and report to work at a certain time. But then I wondered again, how did these people wake up so that they could wake up their clients at the time that their clients needed to be woken up. Larger factories even hired their own knocker-uppers to wake up their employees so that they would get to work on time. Some factories even had their own whistle. A lot of people that worked at these factories lived very close to the factories, so this whistle would go off when it was time for the workers to wake up and go to work. In 1787, Levi Hutchins of New Hampshire invented another alarm clock. His was built in a pine box and used a gear mechanism that would sound an alarm at 4 a.m. However, his alarm clock could not go off at any other time besides 4 a.m. because that's what he programmed it to do. Because that's the time he wanted to wake up for work. In 1876, the first mechanical wind-up alarm clock was patented by Seth E. Thomas. And this one could be set for any time. 
His was a smaller design and the first of its kind. And so the downfall of mental health begins. Well, I don't know about that, but I know that we've all been sleep deprived since the beginning of alarm clocks. <laughs> Today, at least in the United States, many people use their cell phones as alarm clocks, especially people that own iPhones. People still do use digital alarm clocks, and some still even use wind-up clocks. It's just a lot less common now. But the alarm clock is a staple in society today, and most people have one to wake them up in the morning. Unless you have kids, then that's probably your alarm clock. So the Industrial Revolution brought out a greater need for people to wake up at a specific time and get to work at a specific time. And today, this is obviously still the case. Before that, waking up at a relatively decent time was good enough. Sleep is not prioritized in our society today. Many people understand that we need a certain amount of sleep to, like, function properly, but yet most people still do not get enough sleep. Sleep is directly linked to health and well-being, so it's not really surprising why so many Americans have health ailments. It's all about being on time for work and making money coming home, and then doing that all over again. I definitely noticed a shift in our society, whereas the spiritual time of the day, which used to be in the morning, shifted to now the evening. Evenings are when most people are home with their families. They can relax, they can do whatever hobby they wanna do. You can take nice long baths and light candles and eat. But in my opinion, our mornings have been stripped away from us. I think a lot more people would be morning people if we prioritize sleep more in our society. Often you'll hear, you know, go to bed earlier. But people aren't going to go to bed earlier because the evening is when they have their own personal time and they know that when they wake up in the morning, it's not their time anymore. It's the person that they work for's time. So our sleep deprivation will just go on indefinitely. Along with the invention of the alarm clock, you have increased responsibility and inability to have an excuse to be late, increased stress on your mind and on your body, but you also have a more organized society. People go to work at a certain time and they come home at a certain time. Employers expect you to be at work from hour A to hour B. People go to doctor appointments at specific allotted times. We have dinner reservations and designated times to watch sports and children have specific bedtimes and movie theaters play movies at specific times and so on and so forth. So there is some good and some bad that came along with the invention of the alarm clock, kind of. More things get done during the day, but your overall health and well-being and happiness, I would argue, go down. We continue to be obsessed with schedules and obsessed with time. In closing, that sucks.